Good evening. Welcome to our Monday, Thursday, Holy Week services tonight. It's great to share this Holy Week with you all as we prepare our hearts and minds for Easter Sunday. Uh, just one announcement uh, tonight. Uh, unfortunately, uh, <laughs> California is about to get hit, uh, Southern California is about to get hit by rain again. Uh, to Saturday morning, our Resurrection Festival will indeed still take place, even though uh, it will be raining. Uh, it will be all done inside. Uh, and so we'll meet here at 11 o'clock in the sanctuary for devotion. We will be the kids will be excused and their parents to classrooms for the Easter egg hunt portion. And then the Resurrection Festival portion will be in uh, the parish hall section of our church. The next morning, Easter morning, our Easter breakfast also will still take place, uh, and it will be also in classrooms uh, rather than out under the sun, since there won't be any. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, our Easter 6 a.m. sunrise service uh, will not be in the biblical garden, uh, but it will be in here. So we do have four services still this Sunday, one at 6, 8, 10, and 12. We make our beginning tonight in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Please stand as you're able for a moment of silent reflection. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join in singing our first hymn, hymn number 606, I Lay My Sins on Jesus.
peace of the Lord is with you always. Let us share God's peace with each other.
Good evening. <clears throat> First reading is from the book of Exodus, the 12th chapter, beginning there at verse 1. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, every man shall take a lamb according to their father's house, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest, nearest neighbor shall take according to the number of persons. According to what each can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, that when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and in the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that night roasted on a fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted, its head with its legs and its inner parts. And you shall let none of, the, none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. In this manner you shall eat it, with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and on all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be for you a memorial day, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. As a statue forever, you shall keep it as a feast. This is the word of the Lord. Good evening. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 32. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he, he, in the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body, eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. But if we judged ourselves truly, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. This is the word of the Lord. Our gospel reading this evening comes from the gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 14, beginning at verse 12. Please stand as you're able for the reading. And on the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city. And a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, 
where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. There, prepare for us. And the disciples set out and went into the city and found it just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. And when it was evening, he came with the twelve. And as they were reclining at table and eating, Jesus said, Truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be sorrowful and to say to him one after another, Is it I? He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the dish with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. And as they were eating, he took bread. And after blessing it, broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please remain standing as we together confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Please join in singing hymn number 547, The Lamb. Isn't that it? Okay, go ahead. This bread is my body broken for you. This cup is my blood of the covenant poured out for you. drink of the fruit of this fight until I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom in my Father's kingdom
this bread is my body poured out for you and this cup is my blood of the covenant it's poured out for Let us pray. Father, speak in this place. In the calming of our minds, in the longing of our hearts, by the words of my lips and in the thoughts that we form, speak, O Lord, for your servants listen. Amen. Our God is the great storyteller. God loves to tell stories. And one of his favorites is the account of the original Passover, when Pharaoh's heart was so hardened that it took ten different and horrific plagues for him to finally let God's people go. But more than still telling that story, he loves his people to still hear it. He even set up the annual Passover ritual as a storytelling and hearing session. The youngest child present begins the feast with a question. What makes this night different from all other nights? And then came the story. It was so good that no child ever said, get to the good part, because it was all so good. First, there was the part about the bread. They had to eat unleavened bread because God's people didn't have time to wait around for it to rise. There was the part about the dish with bitter herbs, reminding them that God was delivering them from the bitterness and misery of being slaves in Egypt. There was the part of them eating it in haste, with their belts tightened and sandals on their feet and a staff in their hand. That's because they had to be ready to follow their shepherd, Moses, out and away as quickly as possible. But it got even better. Then there was the part about selecting the lamb. They they weren't to eat it raw or boiled. They They were to eat it roasted, and there were to be no leftovers. But the best part, at least the best part for me, was what they did with the lamb's blood. They took a hyssop branch and painted the blood on the door, on the lintel and on the doorposts. But what happens when a surplus of liquid is painted on the top of something. It drips. And what is the symbol that is made from those four points? A cross. And God would see that blood and that sign of the cross and save them all, save all the firstborns from death. God would see that blood, that blood and pass over them. But it got even better for them. Soon they would hear about what happened to the bad guy in the story, the 
evil king, the king of Egypt, Pharaoh, the enemy of God who hardened his heart and opposed God, the one who made life miserable for God's people by enslaving them, drowning their baby boys and using God's people for his own glory. But then there came the really good part. God fought for his oppressed people, striking down the firstborn of that evil king and all the Egyptians while God's people made their getaway. I'll catch them, I'll pursue them, I'll overtake them, that evil king thought. But he was literally and figuratively going down. God blew open a path through the Red Sea for his people. And they went through it on dry ground. And God brought back the water and plunged the evil king and his army into the sea so that he sunk in those waters like a stone. And all that was left was for God's people to sing to the Lord and dance. For God had brought them triumph, the happy ending to their story. But the story gets even better, because that's not where the story ends. How sad if that were the end of the story. You see, there's even bigger enemies to fight. One of them is crueler, more hateful, and even more evil than Pharaoh, an enemy named Satan. And what about that enemy called death, the final enemy of man? Plus, who is going to deal with the threatening perils of the sin that plagued mankind? Well, fear not, in the fullness of time, the great storyteller took on flesh himself, and on this holy night, begins to bring the story of the Passover to its fulfillment. If you thought the first Passover was the night of nights, story of stories, this night is even better. For this night is Holy Thursday, Monday Thursday. And it's the night where the Holy Spirit has gathered you to hear what Jesus did to ensure a happy ending to your story. For on this Passover, he will go forth to fight for sinners, for you and for me. He celebrates that Passover with the twelve in complete control of the situation. But unlike Pharaoh, he is not caught by surprise. So fittingly, tonight's account also began with a question. Where will you have us prepare for you? to eat the Passover. The great storyteller has come not only to speak, but also to accomplish something. He's not going to make this up as he goes along. He's in complete control. He had already arranged for the upper room to be ready. As he said, it was his time. Like the old story, the bitter herbs were there. Judas dipped his hand in. We know that the unleavened bread was there. The last cup of blessing and forgiveness was there. The lamb was there. But where was the villain? Where's the king who's going to be brought down? If anyone deserves to be struck down on this account, it's Judas, that greedy, hardened betrayer, the tool of the devil. But Jesus loves him, warns him, but he also speaks tenderly and kindly to him. St. Matthew records that as he's betrayed, Jesus calls him friend. Jesus said to him, friend, do what you came to do. Then they came up and laid hands on Jesus and seized him. But if God strikes him down, he should strike us down too. Haven't we too, like Judas, been money hungry? Just think how often we've let greed have its way on our hearts. Consider deceit, our own lives and our own calloused heart. Imagine if our friends knew what they said, what we said behind their backs about them. We too have betrayed friends, betrayed confidences, even been a traitor to the Lord. Ponder for a moment how often our own sinful flesh has gotten the upper hand. 
and how perfectly just God would be to go after us and demand our blood. But now we get to the really good part. But God doesn't go after sinners like Judas or like you or me. In a plot twist that no screenwriter could have come up with, God the Father goes after his own son, the Messiah, God's anointed, the King. He goes after him until he has the blood that makes payment for our sin. Jesus is not only a good guy, he's the perfect guy. He, has, he was nothing like the evil Pharaoh or the fallen Judas. His heart was never calloused against God's word. He loved God's will and he cherished it. But the Father's will was to save sinners through his blood. So for our sake, God the Father heaped our sin and the sin of the entire world from all of time onto this king and plunged him into the sea of wrath. For our sake, he went after the blood of his innocent son that you might be spared and that the story of our life might have a happy ending. My friends, take great comfort in this story, for that is what God's King is all about. For that is why he came into this world. That after instituting the royal feast of his holy supper, he might shed the blood that causes death to pass over us. He's not in any way a cruel king. He's the king of love. And yet, he leaves that final Passover in that upper room to offer his body to be struck down that we might receive his very body and in this sacrament be exalted. The words from his lips were never deceitful, never self-serving, but always in the best interest of us sinners. Yet those lips are the ones that drink from the cup of God's wrath, that our lips might sip the cup of blessing, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which gives to each of us the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. Now that's a great story. That's a happy ending we could never have thought up. The power of death passes over us because it didn't pass over Jesus. Death passes over us because the gift of baptism has marked our bodies with his blood. Damnation passes over us because Jesus is our crucified king whose blood makes this meal a royal feast of feasts. So what makes this night different from other nights? This is a night that we not only get to hear the story of how Jesus instituted a new and better Passover, but we also get to participate in it. For the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? So my friends, come in just a few more precious moments and participate in the King's feast that is about to be prepared for you and in his name. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this night and forever. Amen. And now let us, on this night, when we remember how Jesus gave us his holy supper and allowed himself to be betrayed so that we can be saved, let us pray for ourselves, for Christ's church, and for the world. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, by your righteousness, deliver our souls which are precious in your sight. 
embolden our hearts to pray confident that Christ prays with us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as the institution of your New Testament is celebrated this night among all peoples, make your saving power known throughout the earth. Grant that those who boast in the sacrificial gift of Christ share him with the world he came to bless. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have formed us after the pattern of Christ's humble service. Help us in our vocations to follow his example of self-sacrifice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gather us, heavenly King, around your Son's altar with angels and saints. Bless our fellowship on earth that at length we come to share this feast in eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious host, you welcomed the elders of Israel to eat and drink with you and did not lay your hand on them. As you welcome us to your altar to eat and drink our Lord's Supper, do not lay your hand upon us, but count us worthy to receive forgiveness, life, and salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God of Israel, we rally to your altar in the wilderness of this world. Hear our prayers for all those who are sick in body, mind, or spirit. Refresh them in their suffering and comfort them with your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Especially this night, Lord, we lift you, the people of, of this congregation, the men and women of this congregation who are shut in who are alone and lonely. We ask you, Lord, to be with those who are sick, those who have been stricken with cancer, those who are suffering with heart issues, those whose sight or hearing are diminishing. We ask you to be with those who are in the hospital, in nursing homes, in hospice care. Father, we ask you to be with the homeless of our community, with those who have been or are being abused, those who are addicted, with those who are depressed. Father, on this holy night, as we wait with yearning for Easter Sunday. We ask you to bring all of these people your everlasting love. Sustain them in their trials. Let them feel themselves lying in the hollow of your holy hand. Father, all of us have people on our hearts that we wish to lift to you this night. And we do so at this time, in this moment of silence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, for all of the challenges that we don't know how to face, for all the things we worry about and don't know how to pray for, for those things in our lives that are broken, that burden us, stress us out, and keep us awake all night, Father, you promise to hear those prayers too. Therefore, into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your gracious mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now before we receive our offering this evening, let us again share in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Lord, you are the great teacher. You led by example. We are blessed to study your actions like the washing of feet, and realize the depth of your love and commitment. We beseech you, Lord, to have mercy upon us. Free each of us from all constraints and help us to give freely. We offer ourselves tonight, our prayers, our presence, our gifts, witness, and service to you 
now and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you in your offering this evening. On the night he was betrayed unto death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And after giving thanks and praise, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took a cup of wine. And after giving thanks and praise, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which is poured out for you and for all mankind for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. And he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. 
Amen. My friends, tonight is the first communion of four of our students. Three of them and their families are here tonight. So if I could invite the family of Rachel Brown, the family of Brian Agak, and the family of Noel Clark to come forward first to receive Holy Communion. The feast is prepared. Come to the feast. You are loved, and you are forgiven. Amen. the body of Christ given to you.
You have been given the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You are loved and you are forgiven. May this holy meal strengthen and preserve you in body and soul unto life everlasting. Amen. We now come to the stripping of the altar to prepare ourselves for Good Friday. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life and will never walk in darkness. The events of Golgotha snuffed out the human life of Jesus, the light of the world. As even creation was dark when he suffered, so tonight we extinguish our candles. As we conclude this service of remembrance of Holy Thursday, the decorations on the altar this day are no longer needed. We remove the symbols of this night, the bowl and the cloth, the plate and the chalice. Jesus offered body and sh his shed of blood have been given to us in, with, and under the form of bread and wine in this holy mystery. As he was removed from us in the grave, so we remove the elements and vessels of his sacrament. The missile stand holds our worship book that guide our worship life together as we sing praises to God. As Jesus suffers, joyous songs are not heard. As these sounds of joy are removed from our lips, we remove the missile stand. As Jesus nears death, the hearts of the Roman guards harden further as they gamble for his clothing. The wax in the candles has hardened, so they too are removed.
Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life and will never walk in darkness. The events of Golgotha, our altar, is in the form of the table. It is here where our Lord Jesus serves us as both host and meal at his banquet feast. The coverings and the pyramids are made of fine linen and brocade, materials appropriate for feasting with our king. As our king's body is stripped in crucifixion, so too our altar is stripped of its coverings. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me, from the words of my groaning? Oh, my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our ancestors trusted, they trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me, and they make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My, my mouth is dried up like a postard, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death, for dogs are all around me. A company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. <laughs> 